Okay? Now, um, let's take a look real quick at the Aleph again. The Aleph is used as a prefix as we looked at 11 of the 22 letters. How many? 11 of the 22 letters in Hebrew can be used as a prefix. What's a prefix? Start. It is, a, in this case, it's a letter in Hebrew that goes before the word, prefix. It's fixed to the beginning of the word. Well, is, what is a suffix? It comes, at the end. it comes at the end of the word, coming from the Hebrew word sof, meaning end. So suffix and sof come from the same exact root. It means end. So that's interesting. You have a Latin word that you can see its origin came from, like a lot of other words, translated from Hebrew into Greek into Latin. Okay, so suffix is something that comes at the end of the word, like the word sophit. We say a letter at the end of the word that changes its form is a um, sophit letter. Okay, like um, we have nun sophit and we have mem sophit and other letters that change form at the end of the word. Nonetheless, a suffix is, is usually some ending at the end of the word and usually is related to pronouns. So if I wanted to say name, how would I say name in Hebrew? Okay. A form of this word here, Shem. Or the Ashkenazi would sometimes say Shem. But Shem means name. Kind of makes me think of the Three Stooges. Yeah. By the way, they were Jewish also. Okay, so we have the name Shem, which means name. Shemot is plural, names. Okay, names of, in this case, Shemot Elohim are the names of. Of God. Like the book of Exodus is called what? Shemot. From the fact that these are the names of the, the sons of Jacob, these are the names of the households of Jacob, the 70 that went into Egypt also are mentioned in there, the names of God are mentioned in the book, like El Shaddai and the Yud Hebate that we'll take a look at. So what we have here is we have um, the word Shem, and if I wanted <coughs> to say his name, I would add a suffix at the end, the vav, and it would turn into shemo. Baruch shemo, blessed is his name. So we hear that a lot in Hebrew blessings, Baruch shemo, and blessed is his name. So shemo would be his name. Um, I would say my name as shmi, which is a contraction of Shem and Ani, which is the pronoun for I. So how do you say I in Hebrew? How do you say I in Hebrew? Ani. How do you say my name? Shmi. Shmi. So Shmi Baron, I am, some strength, or in English, Brian. Okay? So here we have uh, Shmi, and you can say your name. How would you say your name? In Hebrew? Uh, Shmi Nadiva. So here we have my name is versus his name is. Okay? So I could say Shmo El Shaddai. His name is El Shaddai. I could say that and that would be a, a great statement in Hebrew. Okay? So we see you have suff suffixes at the end, but 11 letters by themselves, individual letters, can be used as prefixes at the beginning of the word. Okay, so we've been looking at prefixes. We've looked at the preposition, prepositional prefixes of bait, kaf, lamed, and mem. We've looked at the definite article prefix, hey, for the word the. We've looked at the um, uh, conjunctional prefix, which is vav, for and. And we looked at the pronoun prefix, which is shin, which is that, which, or who, added to the word. Now, our final four of the eleven is the aleph, the yud, the nun, and the ta. Okay? So what we looked at last week is the fact that the uh, Aleph, at the beginning of a root for a verb, changes the verb or conjugates the verb to first person, what else? Singular and future tense. If an Aleph is in the beginning of the, of the root, meaning I take these letters, which is Hey, you, hey. Leave the vowels off for now. Vowels were added. Remember the markings of the vowels, the 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 uh, nikud vocalization, or what we call sometimes the dots and the dashes. 
or added later by the Masoretic uh, um, scribes, okay? But if we just take the root letters, in this case, what are the letters? Hey. Hey, you, hey. Oh, wait a minute, we didn't do our alphabet. Let's do our alphabet just to make sure we're all on the same page. Okay, let's do it. Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalet, Hey. Vav, Zayn, Chet, Tet, Yud. Ka, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samet. Ein, Pe, Sa, E, Kuf, Resh, Shin, Ta. Very good. Our vowels are what? A, E, I, O, U. Tov, Me, O. Okay? So we're taking these letters. Let me hear you say the letter. He. Yud. Yud. He. We're going to add the prefix. What's the prefix we're adding? Aleph. Aleph. So we add the prefix Aleph in the front because we're conjugating a root, which actually means was, the verb to be past tense. Is there a verb to be present tense in Hebrew? No. No. So I don't have to say I am Brian. I would just say I and the word Brian. So in Hebrew, I would say Ani, either Brian or Ani Baron which is equivalent to Brian, son of strength. Almost spelled exactly the same with Hebrew letters. Okay? So, Brian means strength. In Hebrew, son of strength is bar -on. Could have even been the origin of the name Brian in, among Celtic peoples. Okay? Now, more Celtic, depending on how you pronounce that. Okay? So, here we have the root letters. We're adding the olive in the front. And what we have is a statement in the Torah. When Moses asked God, what name shall I tell the children of Israel? Uh, or what name shall I give the children of Israel for the one who is sending me? Who shall I say has sent me? He wanted a name because Egypt, in Egypt there were many gods and goddesses with many names. So he's used to a, a, a culture where gods, plural, have many names. We have a God singular with many names or defining attributes of who he is and what he's done and what he will do. Okay? So in this case, he asked for a name. Did God give him a noun? Yes. No. <laughs> I hate to differ with, the, with our blessed sister, but in this, case, in this case, when Moses asked the question, he did not give us a noun. What did he give us instead? A verb. A verb. I, I am. I am. Well, your our English Bibles say I am. This is I am. This is not correct in Hebrew. I will be who I will be. Okay, this is this almost wrote backwards. Like <laughs> for English would be backwards. For Hebrew would be backwards. <laughs> okay, this is the famous quote unquote. I am standard. This is not correct because remember there is no present tense verb to be in Hebrew. You don't say I am with a written word. The only verb we have is haya, and what does it mean? Was, was, was or can be translated to become, depending on how it's conjugated. So it's the verb was. It's found in the beginning of our portion this week in Genesis thirteen seventeen, vayihi, um, um, a conjugation of haya, which means and it came to pass, and it was that this that Moses. Um, or that Pharaoh sent out the children of Israel out of Egypt. He, he said, let them go. Let them go. Get them out of there. Here is what he kind of said. <laughs> he was so angry at the death of his firstborn son on the 10th plague, he said, send them out of here. Okay, so finally they leave Egypt um, and go through the Yam Suf, the Sea of Reeds, known as the Red Sea. Okay. So, we have the verb was, or can be translated to become. There is no present tense form to be, to be in Hebrew. So, you would never use the statement, I am, and have an equivalent word in Hebrew for am. It's understood. It's understood. So, all I would say is, ani baron, or I could say, shmi baron, my name is. I could say, I am Brian, or my name is Brian. Okay? Right? So, we've got this statement. Instead of giving Moses, uh, or Moshe, his Hebrew name, instead of giving Moshe a name, which is a noun-based name, what did he give him? A verb. He gave him this verb, but he conjugated because he was first person singular speaking in the future. Watch this. This statement, if I give it its vowels, the vowels on your page, 
we have a sabol, we have uh, we have the shva, and then we have another sabol. This would be transliterated a ye, a ye. Okay, this is the statement found in Hebrew. I am. Now, the full statement is the same that we sang earlier. Asher Hayah Who was and who is and who is to come. What we don't have is Asher. Now, I want you to take a look at the pronoun prefix on your page, the letter Sheen. We learned last week that the letter Sheen is used as a prefix. The letter Sheen is used as a prefix in front of a word. Coming from the word asher. Asher. And that would be Aleph, Sheen, Reish. Okay? So here we have Sheen, which is coming from, look, it says from asher. Vowels look like this. Okay? We have a syllable. Okay? So instead of using the Aleph, because Aleph is a silent, silent letter without a vowel point, it's a silent letter, we're not going to use that as a prefix, because it's silent. We're going to use the next um, audible letter, which is the sheen, to represent this word, which can be translated that, or which, or even who. So it is a pronoun prefix, okay? And usually pronounced with a short S sound from the Shaba, she, or like Shemayim, that water up there. Or even a concept of shama and mind together. The idea of there is water. So that water or there is water. Either way, it, it, it makes sense. Okay? So we have this verb root, haya, which means was, but it's tr conjugated with the olive in front, taking it into first person, one person speaking, singular. So, first person is the, the person speaking for themselves, singular, the one person speaking, and future tense. Okay? So, in other words, instead of saying, I am, what is he really saying with the statement, a yay? I will. I will be. So, we have really, I will be. Now, that actually makes more sense than I am that I am. Because I am that I am almost sounds arrogant, like, well, I am that I am. I, or I, I am who I am. Right? Does it sound like Popeye? Popeye. Popeye. It sounds like Popeye, right? I am I am, what I am, I am right? <laughs> and that's all that I am, right? So, but God's not making an arrogant statement, I am that I am. He's actually saying, I will be who I will be. Meaning, if I give you a name, like the Egyptians are used to, I would have to give you a name like that I'm the God over the Nile River, like they had. Or a, a, a God over the sun, the green light. Or a God over the insects like the scarabs and the beetles that, you know, and the different flies and all the things that were part of the plagues. If you think about the plagues that came down on Egypt, they were to destroy the gods of Egypt, quote-unquote, the gods they worship. The sun god that brought light when the earth turned dark. Um, the Nile River, when it turned to blood, because there was a god over the Nile River, so that god obviously died or couldn't keep life in the river anymore. So God was showing, see, all the gods you worship Egypt, I am the only God that can be called God. And these are not gods at all. They have no power. So the ten plagues were actually coming against the ten deities, the major deities that they worshipped. Okay? Now, when he says, I will be who I will be, what he's saying is, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I never revealed this. There was no a necessity to reveal this kind of power to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Instead, God says, I am El Shaddai, which you'll find on your paper here. <clears throat> El Shaddai, number three, on this little small handout, <clears throat> right here, in the names of God. <clears throat> El Shaddai gets translated as God Almighty, or Sufficient God. Almighty God or Sufficient God. And there are some verses in Genesis 17, 1 and Exodus 6, 3 that reveal it. So God says, I did reveal myself um, as yud heh vav -He, the Y-H-V-H, the Tetragrammaton. I revealed myself as El Shaddai. Okay? Now, what he's saying is, now I will be who I will be. Now, this is where we get the yud he vav -he. This is going to be very important. Pay attention. We have the verb hayat, which is our example, correct? What does it mean? Become. Become. Now, 
If I add the olive in front of this, to this set of root letters, and root is three basic letters that make up any form of the word, whether a noun, an adjective, a verb, doesn't matter. Um, it is the root of the three basic letters. If I add the olive in front, it becomes AA. I will be first person talking, God himself talking, singular, only one talking, and future tense. Notice it wasn't three talking. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. But the word that comes forth from his lips, quote unquote, was manifested in the fullness of time as Yeshua Hamashiach. Because he is the word of God. So God the Father is one. But the word that comes forth from him, emanates from him, became what we know as the Son of Man, the suffering servant, the Son of David, the Son of God. So he is the word of God in human flesh. So God is still God. And Yeshua is the word of God. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of God. But God still is what? One. So there's a, a, a beautiful um, unity there without making three gods like typical descriptions describe um, when we talk about the Godhead. Now, it's very important that we see in this statement, I will be that or who I will be. Meaning, what I'm about to do to the Egyptians you've never seen before. You've never seen me do this. When I bring these ten plagues down, I'm going to reveal myself and who you've never seen me to be. I will be. In other words, whenever we take this form of the name, we're saying that God is saying, I will be what you need me to be when you need it. When you need me to open that Red Sea, I'm going to open that Red Sea. When you need peace or shalom, I will be that peace. But this is God the speaking first person. Okay? Now, let's go to the next letter because it's going to explain the yud he vav he. So from this verb, haya comes the verb hava. What does this verb root mean? It's more than just was or a past tense verb to be. What does it mean? Yeah, existed. To exist. exist. Yeah, so existed, yeah. To exist. It comes from the concept to exist. So it, the verb of to be is more than just, well, it was or it is, but it existed. So when God uses this form for his name, Hava, it's going through, this verb is based upon Haya, was or became, but Hava means to exist. How many know, know that no one existed before God? Okay. Alright? And God is the one who brings all things into existence. So it's interesting that he uses both these verbs for the God who was, will be what you need him to be. The God who always was, right? He always was, meaning he always what? Existed. And he brings all things into existence. Now, this is powerful, because what we're going to do is look at you. What does you indicate? It indicates third person. It also indicates future tense, like the olive, and can be used for singular or plural. So I left that out. It could be singular or plural. There's no um, indication of which it is unless you're reading in context. Then you're going to know which it is. Okay? So, for example, if we look at just the uh, third person, we would have to um, kind of use the pronoun he. Okay? So now, what we're doing is taking Hava, which means existed, and we're saying he existed. Based upon he was and will be. Okay? So, what we are saying now is he will be or exist as. So here we have the letters Yud, He, Va, He. We've taken this, we've added the letter U to make the name of God. So God is still using a verb, the one who always existed. The one who always was. And he will, in the future, exist as. Okay? This is a powerful statement. Because now, if I put the word shalom here, if I put shalom, who does he exist as? Peace. Peace. So if I take this Tetragrammaton, this four-letter name of God, which means he who always was or existed. I'm saying he is or exists as our peace, or he will be our peace. When you need him to be peace, he will be. So this statement, I am that I am, or I will be who I will be, is based upon God speaking for himself. 
when we use see this name of the Torah, it's declaring who He is, not God saying it directly, I am. So one is an I am or will be statement, and the other is He is or will be, the you. Okay. Any questions so far? Aleph is first person, first person, you is third person. So that means um, if I'm talking for myself, I'm first person. I would like to go eat something good for lunch. Okay. I speak second person when I speak to Pete and say, would you, Pete, would you like to go to lunch with me, Pete? Ken. Ken, okay, he said he'd like to go to lunch. So now when I say you, that's second person, right? Because I'm speaking to a second person in my communication. First person to second person. But if I'm not talking directly to a person, or, but I'm talking about a person, and I refer to him or her over there, that's third person, correct? So first person, second person, someone who's not in the conversation would be third person. So when the, Moses is writing in the Torah about God, the name used for God is yud heh vav -Hey, which is saying he was or existed or will be, um, and in, case, in this case, he exists as or will exist as or will be what we need it to be, whatever covenant name is given. So shalom, um, um, rofecha, he's our healer, you know, uh, mechadesh, He's our sanctification. Um, sh uh, sh Shema, He will be there. All these different names are names, covenant names of God. Now, how do we get to the name Yeshua? Because that's the focal point of my last couple of minutes here. And, and obviously, if we just quickly fill in what these others are, we learn that the uh, new added is also first person, um, but is plural um, and future. And then the Tav um, starts off being second person, future tense. And then it can also be used for, and I'll say or, um, third person, singular, in this case, feminine, future tense. Okay, so our focus is not on the noon and the top today, but our focus is on the Aleph and the youth. From the I am statement, or the I will be statement, a yea, a share, a yea, I will be who I will be, to the youth statement, yud he vav he, I will exist as. Meaning, who, he who always existed will continue to exist in the future as. Shalom. Right? Sanctification. Healing. Salvation. So, Let's take a look at um, entry number eight. What name for God do we have? Yeah. Yeah, we don't have the full Yud, yeah. Hey, Vav, Hey. We have only the first two letters, Yud, Hey, which is taken from Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey. And this is translated Yah in, from the Gutenberg Press. We have this spelling. Looks like Ja. Sounds like Jamaican yeah. uh, reference to God, right? Ja. Uh, but the Germans pronounce the J as a Y, just like they uh, the Russians, and I think maybe Germans too, uh, pronounce the W as a V, like Wagner would be Wagner. Yavo. Yavo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have Ya as in Hallelujah. How do you spell Hallelujah? These three letters are spelled in English from the Gutenberg Press. The German J is used, but English spelled, pronounces the J as, I forget which origin that is, it's another European group that has that, the, the actual sound that we get the, the J in English. But the um, German sound would be the same as this Y, Yah. So we say Hallelujah, but we spell with a J. When we say Hallelujah, Hallelujah means praise or praise Him. So praise the Lord, praise Yah. Okay? So Hallelujah, it uses the short form of the name of God. Most of the time, there is no continuous uh, writing of the letters. It's the word hallelujah and yeah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise you, the Lord. So, this name, if you add it with the word salvation, um, it's interesting. It's kind of found in the, the changing of Hosea or Hosea to Yehoshua uh, in Numbers 13. I think it's actually 15 and 16, we have the change of Moses changing Hosea's name to 
Yehoshua. The full Hebrew means Yah saves. And the reason for the E is because, because of the, the uh, multiple syllables, we have to use a Shabbat underneath the letter Yud, so it changes from Yah to Yeh. Remember, the vowels are added, they're not significant. What's significant is any form of a consonant letter, so it's not uh, uh, necessary to always um, have the exact same vowels uh, because they're added. Okay? So, here we have Yehoshua, which means Yah is salvation, or Yah saves. So Hosea's name, or Hosea's name, was exactly that, Savior, salvation, um, and Moses changed his name to remind him that it's Yah who saves. You're not salvation, Joshua. Remember, Joshua is this name here, Yehoshua. Our English is Joshua. But then there's another priest by the name of Yehoshua, or the Aramaic form would be what? Yeshua. Guess how our English translations spell his name in in the in the Tanakh. Jeshua. Huh. Or people pronounce it Jeshua. Now why did they change from this spelling from the understudy of Moses? From the O to the E. In Hebrew, it's Yehoshua. In Aramaic, it's Yeshua. And this same name is used for both people in Nehemiah and in Zechariah. So, why the difference of spelling? The translators wanted you to know this guy is different from this guy. So they purposely used a different vowel. But both vowels are found here. The E and the O. What gets dropped in, he in, in Aramaic is the H. The H sound is not necessary and it becomes Yehoshua to Yeshua. But in English, we have either the O or the E used. Still should be pronounced either Yoshua or Yeshua. Obviously, this is a created name, Joshua. It's a transliterated name. So basically, the name Jesus is translated from Hebrew to Aramaic, then Greek into Latin, then through the German Gutenberg Press into English. How many generations is that? It's about five. So every time you see Jesus, you really should think what? Yeshua, which is the same name as Joshua. In the Hebrew, it's exactly the same name. So in the synagogue, they would have called Yeshua to the uh, bima by saying Yehoshua, and they would have said, they would say, Ben Yosef. But in the street and among his family, they would have called him Yeshua in the Aramaic tongue. So he would be known as both. In Hebrew, full Hebrew name, and then his Aramaic um, form of that name. Okay? And both Yeshua and Yehoshua is used for Joshua in the, in the Hebrew Scriptures. Okay. Okay. So you can see that Jesus' name or Yeshua's name means Yah saves or Yah or the Lord is salvation. How perfect is that? You will call him Yeshua for he will save his people from their sins. Let's close in prayer. Avinu Malkinu, our Father and our King, we thank you this morning for blessing us uh, to look at the names of God in relationship to the verb conjugation prefixes, and we pray, Lord God, these Shemot Elohim, we can use them in our understanding, not only who you are, but to call upon you and call upon that name, that name is, which is above every name, that the name Yah was given to um, Yeshua to be that name representing his Father, and I thank you that, Father, you have saved us through the mediation, through your servant Yeshua, just as Israel was saved from Egypt through your servant Moshe. In the name of Yeshua we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you. May the Lord grant you His peace. Give it Adonai. May the Lord bless you and keep you And make His face to shine upon you And be gracious to you May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you May the Lord grant you His peace 
יאר אדוני בנווה לך ויהונך ישא אדוני בנווה לך ויעשה לך